Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. I am very excited for everything that's going to come today because I have some big, big plans with regards to improving everything we worked on last session, with regards to adding a new animal in, with regards to all of the feedback and thoughts and opinions that were shared in the comments of the previous episode as well. Uh, I actually... Uh, I would say shortly after recording the previous episode, uh, I realized, as as many of you uh, very correctly pointed out as well, um, the enclosure that we built last session was way too small. Way, 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 way too small. And it's just not going to do. So I started thinking, more or less again, immediately after finishing recording the previous episode, I started thinking like, okay, well, how do we go about expanding it? How do I want this to look? How do I want this to work? And pretty immediately some ideas came to mind and I think I might finally I think I'm not 100% sure <laughs> but I think I might finally have a large like planes style enclosure that's going to uh, rival uh, some of my other enclosures because again like I've said before I always feel like those are some of my weakest uh, works I guess that's I, you know what actually it occurs to me now how to put it because I was trying to I was trying to communicate this last time and I think I did a terrible job of it I feel like architectural enclosures like enclosures that involve a lot of like uh, building elements like constructed elements I don't think I, I I think they're like I think I do a decent job with them I mean I mean again right like I, I always I'm one of those people that often dislikes their own work so uh, work with me here uh, it's very difficult to even give myself a, a a small compliment like that, but like I feel like you know I'm I'm able to to pull these kinds of elements off, you know, open spaces and stuff like that. At this scale, I'm able to pull that kind of stuff off, and I feel pretty good about like how these spaces look and feel and the the vibe they create. Um, you know, like I feel like these are these are these are you know like in that in the same um, realm, I guess, of uh, like how how well pulled off they are i guess whereas i always feel like the uh, large open spaces are my weak is that just a bunch of it is they're all just having a meal over here i was like thrown off by the view from the distance over here i was like what is going on over here this massive congregation of uh of animals um but i feel like so i feel like the open plane kind of enclosures are some of my weakest work that's how that's the way to put it um i don't think they're terrible um they're just not my personal favorite you know i feel like it's it's some of my yeah weaker work it's just because i feel like uncertain about how to make it interesting what to do again i feel like with the uh, hippos that was a little different because like while still i i do still feel like this enclosure is you know as far as like all the enclosures i've ever made between elite zoo north and south i still feel like it is some of my weaker work and it's it's good to be able to say that because then you know i know uh, what I need to work on, what I need to improve, what I need to get better at doing. Uh, but, you know, we did manage to make this space a bit more interesting than my usual uh, planes kind of enclosures, as I was saying last session as well. Uh, however, still overall, I was kind of like, yeah, okay, it's, it's okay. It's okay. If I didn't like it, if I wasn't okay with it, I wouldn't call it done. Um, but there's obviously different degrees of of, uh, of doneness, right? Like, I, I, if I were to look at, um, you know, this this open space versus literally this that's right next to it, Personally, at least, I feel like one of these uh, feels better than the other. And it's it's a very subjective thing, right? So different people will have different opinions on that. But you kind of get what I'm getting at. And I feel like because these large open spaces are so barren, I tend to feel like they're some of my weaker work because there's less going on, which isn't necessarily... That's not necessarily the mark of a good job. However, I feel like that's what go goes on in my head. Anyway, I'm, I'm belaboring a point I already made last session. I apologize for that. My actual point being here today that uh, I feel like my plans for this enclosure here, uh, they're going to be plans that will, yes, uh, rival some of those other enclosures that uh, I feel like have you know more going on, so to speak. Now, the challenge will still be the you know vegetation coverage and stuff like that, because a lot of these animals, again, they're not big fans of uh, of too much vegetation. Uh, so we're going to have to find a sweet balance as we expand this space. Now we will have to expand this. I think many of you suggested that we expand it kind of like depth wise over here. And I think that's the way to go. Uh, I think it just makes more sense rather than, you know, going over this way. And by the way, to those of you wondering what's going on over here, this will continue on. If we are going to add any of the animals from that upcoming DLC, then I want to make sure that we're able to like, you know, take advantage of, uh, 
uh, of stuff over here and over here. I might put down another uh, space to like grab food at and stuff over here too. Uh, and, and that actually reminds me, I do have a lot of name suggestions that I got for uh, the enclosure as well as some of these stalls up over here. Uh, I have some picked out. I haven't got them all picked out. Uh, I just want to leave it open for, you know, any more suggestions if folks were catching up with the episodes or if they wanted to drop in a suggestion or still trying to come up with one. Feel free to keep them coming in the comments and it will start um, kind of noting them down and stuff moving forward. I, I really wanted to focus on the enclosure first, though, and that's going to be the primary focus of today's uh, episode. We're going to be adding a new animal. We're going to be expanding this enclosure a little bit. And we're, uh, yeah, we're going to have a, some management time lapse and then back to uh, back to more management. It's going to be a full session. Just taking a look around, I do think we need to have better lighting. I don't think this lighting is very conducive to um, to, to doing a time lapse. I just feel like it's a little too directional and it's got too much of a, of a color of its own to to make for a clear view of everything that's going on. Yeah, that's much better. For I mean, like I love the the orange fiery lighting as as far as like colors and artistry is concerned. But for actual building work, you kind of need this like very harsh direct lighting, in my opinion, at least to get like a clear. Uh, sight uh, vision on 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 everything you're doing. Uh, all right, yeah, this is this is gonna be interesting. Just taking a look again for my own reflection, basically. I'm up top over here. I'm just trying to think think out loud because if, if this goes too far, I want to make sure that guests are still able to see. Again, the problem is that guests will be able to see that far, but the education boards and stuff won't apply. So to actually in engage with animals when they're all the way out over here, we're they're going to have to take these uh, these paths off to the side. Uh, to do that but i think uh, i think it'll be an interesting space anyway so with all that said and done and uh, uh, hopefully i was hopefully i'm clear now about my opinion about these uh open spaces as opposed to even less clear now i, I thought my explanation would make things even clearer but in in fact i might have done the exact opposite but anyway uh you're hopefully going to see what i mean as this place as this space rather starts to come together but we cannot do that until we take a look at the animal we'll be adding today so folks the animal we're adding today is the springbok. Uh, again, if we take a look at the interspecies enrichment really quickly here, just as a glance, you will see that it gets along with a common ostrich as well as everything else in that bunch. So it'll be a welcome addition uh, and actually a surprisingly small amount written over here. But uh, let's get right into it. The springbok, the Antidorcus marsupialis. Mer marsupialis. Is, are, you a, are you a marsupial? No. Right? No. No. Are you? Why is that? I'm curious. Okay. The springbok or Antidorcus, Antidorsus, Dorcus, Antidorcus, right? That's how you say that, right? Uh, Marsupialis is a small species of antelope native to the savannas of southern Africa. They have lyre shaped black horns. Ah. Yeah, I guess they do. A tan coat with dark brown markings, a white belly and face with dark brown tear marks from their eyes to their muzzles. Males and females are a similar size and both have horns, though the males are more robust. Springboks are not endangered, so there is no specific conservation efforts for the species. They are easy to breed in captivity, often as game animals and for meat, and are protected in areas where their range falls into nature reserves. Alright, so they're relatively safe animals with a population of 2 to 2.5 million, so that's, you know, it's nice to have some positivity sometimes. Um, oh, I do find it interesting how there, like, there's got to be a reason for, for this, right, for this kind of a thing. Because, like, cheetahs have an indication of this kind of a thing as well. We've got this with a springbok, too. Is it just like a... You gotta wonder sometimes, like, what's just there for visual interest and what's there for... Like, it's not like... These aren't, like, visual interest. What am I... You know what I mean, right? Like, yes, it's aesthetically... It's an aesthetic thing. It's a, it's a visual element. But that's not how animals are... That's not how, how, it, that's not how it works, you know? So things don't happen just because, like, it's visually... Because it's a, it's got a visual component to it. Things are normally the result of either just pure randomness, which this very well might be, or the result of, of you know, evolutionary requirement. Um, whether it's you know survival or it's, uh, uh, you know, like does it help with the the sun? I, I forget which animal it is, but I know a lot of humans, for example, uh, in, in like ancient Egypt and stuff, uh, you'd put like, and, and even in modern day, hotter climates. Uh, you'll find people put uh, like coal or something around the eye to uh, to, to to reduce um, like the the strain from like the the sun and and stuff, right? So does this play a similar effect? You know, you're in a very sunny part of the world 
where it's relatively consistently sunny, except for when the sun has set, obviously. So, you know, is this kind of an evolutionary trait to help with, uh, with a similar, in a similar kind of a way, having a dark spot around the eye? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm actually curious. Uh, you know, when it's a couple of animals that do it, it's like, okay, fine, whatever. It's a, it's whatever. It's a thing. It's a, it's a visual. It's a, it's a, it just so happens to exist. But when a lot of animals from similar regions or similar climes do it, uh, that's when you kind of start to wonder, it's like, okay, well, what does it serve a purpose? And I'm sure somebody uh, much smarter than me in the comments is going to have an answer to that question. Uh, so feel free to share, but I might look that up as well because I'm curious. Because again, it might also just be pure randomness. A lot of stuff happens out of pure randomness in, uh, you know, through through the countless <laughs> billions of years of, uh, of evolutionary process. Um, but I, I do wonder sometimes. Anyway, natural habitat. A relatively small region, actually, of Africa. I was expecting a slightly wider spread, but I guess not. And they are grassland and desert dwelling. So again, it'll be a uh, similar kind of a landscape. Right? I imagine all these animals have a similar uh, landscape or a similar uh, set of biomes that they that they like to live in. Uh, again, not too much land requirement. However, I would like to have big herds. I would like to have a large number of these animals, and it's a lot of a variety of animals, or it's, it's various animals. So we're going to be going much larger than this with uh, with full intent this time. Unlike my usual, where it's just like, oops, this enclosure is 10 times as large as it needs to be. Um, maybe a Botswana, South Africa. Fair enough. Species data. Group size is, there we go, 3 to 35. Up to 1 male, up to 34 females. 1 male, 34 females. Wild. That's like, I mean, we, I don't know. We, we're not going to have a max number here, but it's good to know we have the option to have a a large number of animals it'll, it'll make this space more attractive for our guests and stuff as well uh the bachelor group sizes are three to 35 uh whether male or female dominance is territorial males with female harem uh polygonous mating system shy relationship with humans however guests can enter the habitat really that okay is a surprise to me anytime i see something like with like horns like this i mean i, I that's a, that's actually I'm I'm genuinely surprised. I didn't think you could enter a, a springbok habitat. Huh. Uh huh. You know I I I don't I don't I'm at a loss for words. I uh I really would have not expected that at all cuz like with with a with an antelope you can't enter. I I guess um antelopes are more aggressive. Oh, yeah, I guess you can. With a pronghorn antelope, you can enter. Huh. I guess they're that shy. They just don't uh, don't bother you. But the uh, the sable antelope, you you cannot enter. Because I guess they're not shy, so they're more likely to actually do something. That's interesting. Okay. But it's... Huh. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, yeah, again, you learn something new every day, right? Anyway, back to the springbok. Guests can into the habitat. We're not going to be able to take advantage of that over here, unfortunately. Size for males and females, 32 inches tall at the shoulder. That reminds me, no sexual dimorphism referenced over here in this in this area. Huh. Fair enough. Life expectancy is 10 years across the board. Weight is 77 pounds across the board. Sexual maturity at one year. Sterility at death. Offspring per mating event is one. Six month gestation. 12 month interbirth. And very easy reproduction in captivity. Very well. Social needs. Springboks have a complex and changeable social structure. Like most ungulates. Ungulates? Un ungulates? I always... Get thrown off by that word. They live in herds that can be composed of multiple group types. These include mixed groups of non-dominant males, females, and juveniles, bachelor groups of juveniles and young adult males, solitary dominant males who are territorial and defend their range from other males, and breeding harems comprised of a dominant male and multiple receptive females. Ah, okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, the composition of these groups, as well as the numbers within them, change depending on the time of year and the availability of food. For example, during the rainy season, there will be more breeding harem groups than at other times of the year. Presumably, rainy season is, uh, is mating season as well, presumably. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Huh. Reproduction. To mate, territorial dominant males will herd females passing through and foraging on their territory together creating a harem that's kind of funny uh that's that's it's just like it's like a dude just hanging out as a bunch of uh female springbok walk by and and the male's just like hey uh you wanna you wanna come join this little group over here you wanna hang out <laughs> it's just that's basically what's going on over here he will display to them by jumping high off the ground and defending their range from rival males 
supporting a female in his harem by approaching her and tapping his foot on the ground multiple times. If she's receptive, she will allow him to mate with her. Okay, so step one is convincing females to join your group. And to do that, you show your jumping capabilities, I guess, uh, and defend your range from rival males. So now once they've joined the harem, when you want to mate with them, you tap your foot on the ground, and if they're receptive... Okay, so by being in the harem, you aren't automatically a mate, is my understanding there. So you might be in a harem, but you might be, like, not one of the mating partners. So do you end up not having any offspring that season? Or, like, how does that work? And what happens after, like, do you only stay for one mating season and then move on? I have so many questions. I'm so curious. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's keep reading. Uh, after a pregnancy of five to six months, the mother will give birth to a single calf, which is weaned by the time it is four months old. Females will stay with their mother's herd and reach sexual maturity at seven months old, whereas males will leave their mother's herd at approximately six months old. Sorry, maturity at seven months old. I feel like I said six. And then males will leave their mother's herd at approximately six months old and join a bachelor herd, reaching maturity, sexual maturity at the age of two. They may then establish territory and become a dominant male. However, many males never become dominant and will never acquire a harem, mating instead with receptive females within a mixed group. Okay, so it doesn't have to be one male with multiple females. It could be a mixed group instead where they're mating. Why? Okay, that is really... this is. You know, what I really quite like about how Zoopedia is laid out and how much information it has is like 9 out of 10 times. Sometimes it's not the case, but I feel like more often than not, almost always, 9 out of 10 times, they give you just enough information to learn, but also have questions. And to me, that's the best kind of learning is when you're left with questions. Well, not the best kind of learning, but the best kind of uh, imparting of information in this kind of a format is when the recipient is left with questions because then you get curious and you go, I'm going to look this up. I'm going to Google this. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> then go to the library knowing full well that like, that's, that's not necessarily what a lot of people do anymore. Uh, um, but, you know, you, you get curious to, like, look this kind of stuff up. And I'm very, I'm very, very, very curious about... There's some really fascinating, like, animal behaviors out there that I was just completely unaware of, right? And every time I to talked about um, Planet Zoo and my excitement for it before the game came out, I would often talk about, like, this is... Zoopedia is one of the things I'm most excited for because... I, I do I do love animals I I, I love animals I think animals are, are fascinating I, I'm like but obviously there's a limit to how much I know about the countless animals in the world right so it's been very fun for me it's been very pleasant for me to like learn about animals and learn of animals uh, through Zoopedia it's been it's been it's been an absolute pleasure. I can't wait to see like fun facts and stuff as well. I've always loved it. Anyway, uh, as far as the research status is concerned, of course, we don't have too much. They will enjoy these scratching trees. Now, again, I feel like the scratching trees were added with that Southeast Asia DLC, but maybe I was mistaken. They were added with that DLC, right? Uh, if someone uh, knows off the top of their head, feel free to let me know. But um, again, though, we, we see like nothing unique over here. I'll, I'll mention it every time because I, I really want it to be that every animal at least gets one unique thing, whether it's a, a my like does the grab ball have to be a grab ball every time? Could it be a grab something else? The rubbing pillars could be of different... I don't know, you know, just small, small things to add a bit more variety. Interspecies enrichment, of course, we're familiar with right now, or by now, I should say. We've uh, we've seen uh, we've seen this list countless times. Uh, but with that said, and with that done, I think it's time to dive back into a time lapse over here. Now, I feel like these ostriches are going to be... Um, well, they're going to have issues while I adjust the... Uh, the actual um, space here, won't they? If I delete any section of the wall, I'm gonna have to, you know, deal with like the escape notification and stuff. And while it's not a problem, I don't like that it comes up. I I actually, that reminds me. Did I know we have an answer to this from before? But whatever happened to um, 75 conservation credits for these stats, Olafemi, from? Bonga Bonganga. You have been adopted. So that's our, our one male, I suppose. And now we need a bunch of uh, females as well, right? Um, but yeah, what, whatever, whatever did happen to uh, the inspector? He used to come by so often. And hasn't in... ever. There was a time when they just stopped coming and 
and then they've never come again. And I feel like it's like a setting or something. I feel like we've talked about this, but... This is the last time the, inspect the inspector came. When we had Croc Croc, Pachamama's Garden, Llama Lane was having issues, and we had a Habitat 14. That's the last time the inspector came around the zoo. That's weird. Weird. Anyways, let's go ahead and replace these. I haven't checked the crime tab in a long time. Things are looking pretty good overall, though. Anyway, folks, uh, I think it's time to dive on in. So let's go ahead and just check this really quickly. Hopefully this won't be a problem for much longer. I'm not sure why these guys are still unhappy. I don't know if you're, like, stuck or something. I don't know why you're not eating, but I have called the keeper. Oh, they haven't escaped there yet. I have called the keeper, so hopefully some food comes through soon. Cause that's that's why they're not having a good time is they haven't eaten. So let's call the keeper again. Uh, what I could also do just to play it safe is you are also a feeder, so hopefully they'll get fed here if they don't get fed up over here. But the game doesn't tell me that a keeper can't reach this. If a game told me that the keeper can't reach this, then I'd move it elsewhere. So they should be able to reach it, and hopefully, hopefully they will, and we'll get these animals fed. Anyway, folks. That's enough of that. Let's go ahead and dive on in over here to our time lapse without any further time to waste. Folks, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, I am super excited for today's time lapse. I, uh, th there's some stuff that happens after the time lapse that's really quite exciting. Uh, um, and I'm still like giddy with glee <laughs> because of it. Uh, and it just makes me, it, it just makes me like this space so much more. Like, I, I'm quite pleased with this space. I, I really quite like how this space ends up looking at the end of today's time lapse. I feel like I might expand it a little bit further, potentially, as well. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. We, we expanded a fair bit today, as you can see. I'm kind of, like, hemming and hawing over how big I want it to be. I expanded a fair bit today. Um, my only concern is, I guess... I, I'm not sure how it'll look once animals are in. I feel like it'll be filled enough once the animals are actually in and walking around. Uh, so I, I just wanted to be careful about overdoing it, or rather not overdoing it. But apart from that, apart from just kind of liking the space itself, I really am quite enjoying how the animals are interacting with the space. And uh, and that's a big part of what uh, what's just... I, I'm, I'm really excited to for, for you to see kind of like what comes uh, after the time lapse, especially because it, it, it changed... My opinion from being like, yeah, I, I quite like this space to, wow, I really love this space. <laughs> um, anyway, so it's a pretty complicated space. Uh, not not too complicated, but there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts. There's the uh, upper level with the uh, water that I previously established. But uh, yes, this is a party elite enclosure. So, of course, there's going to be some waterfalls. Uh, but I thought I'd make a really nice kind of like set of waterfalls that, uh, that, that, that bring this, you know, body of water uh, to a, a, a pool at the bottom kind of a thing. Not a pool, but like a, you know, a, a lake. But I mean, it pools at the bottom, like water pools. That's that's what I mean. Um, so I, I thought that'd be nice, and it would it would give this, like... It, it would give, uh... Like a, a, a break in the monotony of, of the ground, right? It would break that up, and it would uh, make it a bit more interesting to look at. Plus, waterfalls are just... They just, they're interesting to look at. They're dynamic. They're very... There's a lot of energy, literally, and, you know, metaphorically speaking... Um, so I think they're quite nice to look at. They're quite pleasant to look at. And between using these waterfall pieces and some glass barriers to actually uh, put the water, you know, in and, and, and hold it in place, basically, uh, I feel like I get a pretty good structure over here relatively quickly. It's got a nice bit of a winding shape to it as well. So it's, you know, not like a straightforward waterfall. It, it makes me think of like the cassowary um, enclosure or rather just outside of the cassowary enclosure where we did some interesting fun stuff with waterfalls except you know add to that some more curves and uh, a bit more sort of dynamism I guess and uh, and you have uh, you have this layout and now again it looks pretty kind of simple and, and even kind of ugly right now but that's because I haven't put in all the rocks and things yet though I, I did realize you know what I need some more space so we make it even larger to accommodate the uh, the, the the river and 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 the varied kind of like uh, levels or, or, or yeah, I guess levels of, of terrain here. Um, but yeah, quite pleased. There is a there is that that upper level. There is like the a middle 
level kind of sort of and there's a, a lower level as well and, and the uh the ways to get from point a to point b i think are quite interesting too for the animals and uh, for the people themselves i'm actually going to try and create a rather smooth experience too and i'm very pleased with how, how that turns out so i think you'll see me yeah work over here again it was a bit of a I'll, I'll be honest it was a bit of a struggle this was actually a uh um so it was a, a harder i guess time lapse to execute than i had uh had than i than i thought it would be uh, but at the same time, it is also a lot closer to what I had in mind than it typically ends up being. So pretty pleased with that as well. Uh, but yeah, creating another little uh, sort of ledge to, to look at the animals from as well. Uh, I, I really quite like how the one up top turned out, so I thought I'd recreate that. We actually adjust this a bit in a bit. I think the shape of it uh, in particular, yeah, yeah, I think I edited it right now. I was just trying to like remember, like, when do I edit it? Yeah, the shape of this is much better. It kind of like sticks out a little bit so you can actually, again, stand over the animals. Um, and it's a really, at the end, again, it's a really good view from that point as well. After this, uh, after this time lapse is done, we spend some time over there. Honestly, I, I feel like this enclosure really makes me feel like some of those Elitsu North moments where I would just kind of afterwards be like, and look at this vantage point. I really like this vantage point. You know, it makes me think of those, or some of the uh, other enclosures we've done at Litsu South, where I feel that way, where it's just like, just look at, just look at the views, you know. Um, it, it has been sometimes. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like any of the enclosures we've made or anything like that, but it's a very, it's a very different kind of enclosure, and it's very reminiscent of some of those, you know, moments for me, or some of those feelings, I guess, uh, for me personally. And I don't know if it's the same for for y'all, or or if that's just me, but uh, it definitely, I don't know. This 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 enclosure definitely kind of hits a spot, strikes a chord. Um, hits a nerve what what are all, whatever are all, all, all the sayings are uh with regards to that kind of a vibe right but uh but next step is to of course make the waterfalls feel a bit more natural uh try to get rid of the clearly artificial look to them uh, and i think it works out quite well so basically what i find is all, all you really have to do is you don't necessarily have to cover everything uh that uh that comes from that construct like that building piece uh you just have to like do enough around it to distract from its pieces. Now, up top over here, because we have the glass exposed as well, I decided to use these uh, these trees to like cover up the the the, the like the edges and things like that. Um, but at the lower spot, and even a bit at the top over here, I, I end up using a lot of trees to just like distract the eye. So you're not looking, unless you're looking for the seams or, or whatever you want to call them, uh, you're not going to see them because you're distracted by you know. The, the the flowers or or the literal trees i'm about to start putting down and also just the colors of the trees i really quite like we've got different shades of green we've got the oranges we've got like that very like this very desaturated color as well i'm, I'm really uh quite pleased with just how much uh color variety we managed to get in a rather you know plain area as it were um and you can see me experimenting with more dense forestry out over here i'm not sure if it's going to stay that way Probably not, so I get rid of it. And, and again, I'll, I'll do the outer like rim area afterwards. But what I did need to do was get the uh, water treatment in, of course, because we have so many broken segments of uh, of water. So we had to get the water treatment plant in. So I just got that done far enough away from any guest uh, walkways or anything like that. Uh, and we will add that to our work zone after the time lapse as well. And then back over here, just adding some more vegetation again, trying to bring some life to uh, to, to the waterways and. And it was still, so despite everything we've done, and again, I like where it sits right now, I realize it's still not, the plain areas are still a little too plain, pun entirely intended, of course. And I realize that, you know what, a lot of the times with the certain shifts in terrain, with certain, with, with sudden shifts in terrain, rather, uh, you would get like rock sticking out or, or you'd get, uh, you, you'd get like those disruptions on the surface of, 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 of the terrain and so i start doing a bit more of that and we end up with something that i, I actually really quite uh, quite like I, I don't know i might tweak it a little bit but we end up with a lot of parts that uh, that i feel like work nicely together i use the uh the noise generation um terrain tool over here and then i use this to kind of inform the placement of these rocks and that automatically i feel like just helps break it up a bit uh, and again like brings brings some life to the space where otherwise it was just like this plant a uh, plain flat uh, space and then again drop a couple of trees in and all of a sudden boom there you go it's like it actually feels like there's something over there it feels like it's a you know <laughs> like it's a well thought out place in the enclosure um but no I, I am really quite pleased with uh with how these uh have all come together a lot of experimentation happened here that i don't normally do and it's funny as well looking back at this because it just feels like wow that happened so quickly but the truth be told i was mulling over that for so long it's kind of funny even for me to look back at 
at that, uh, you know, roughened up terrain where we put down the rocks, because at first I stared at it for like a handful of minutes being like, oh, this is ugly, what am I going to do with this? But, you know, spend time and, and come up with some solutions. Anyway, folks, that is it for the time lapse. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to take a tour of the space afterwards, and uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Um, really quite pleased with this. Uh, God, very quite pleased with this. But folks, for now, back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse, and uh, you know what? It's coming together. It's it's coming together. I'm liking it. I want to see how the space looks with a bunch of animals in it before I start doing more to it. Uh, I want to make sure, you know, we're actually taking into consideration, like, right now there's still some, like, empty spots here and there, but once the animals come through and they're running around, that they will also, uh, again, right, like... I just, all I have to do is just to remind myself and, and I guess all of us, zoom all the way up over, man, this zoo is huge. Zoom all the way up over here and go, right, animals can fill up spaces, right? It's just like, I really want to see what they look like when they're actually running around and roaming around and uh, I want to see what that does to the space and then we can take a look at adding more if we need to. But I am actually quite pleased with the, yeah, how, dy how dynamic the space is. I'm really hoping they're able to use this little sandbar over here to cross the river and uh, so they'll have this little cozy spot up over here where they can run around, play, eat. And they can kind of like take this little sandbar uh, where is it? up over here across, uh, get to the other side, head on over, head down over here, you know, play over here. There's stuff to like play with. There's stuff to, this is shade to, to sit in and stuff. And then continue moving down through uh, this little valley type thing over here, I suppose, down to here where there's more water to drink, more food to have. And just uh, a very expansive space. I mean, I, I feel like it's pretty. I feel like it's pretty compelling. I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with this. I, I'm. Uh, I'm actually quite pleased with this. Um, yeah, yeah. And I also like how the um, trees act like these little pops of color, which is funny to say because like it's all earth tones back there, like browns and 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 like yellowy greens and stuff. But the orange still somehow manages to pop out. Eh. Um, oh, by the way, it was pointed out to me that. Um, or I think it was a uh, not not point. That's not the right word. But uh, but the uh, the pro the protea is I'm assuming how that's said. I was brought up as like it's unfortunate that it's not in the game. It actually is in the game. So uh, we've got the uh, protea uh, in here. Quite quite a few of them actually. We put some in last time as well. Um, so we, we we got a few of them in here. And let's go ahead and get the uh, springbok in here as well. Oh dear, what's it called when? Uh, What's it called when you're walking around with a spring in your step? A spring walk? I don't even know why it was not necessary. Uh, let's go ahead and send Olafemi, our male, to the zoo. Right over here. And let's go ahead and get a couple of female springbok as well. Viola, no, uh, oh, Sada over here. Yep, go ahead and grab you from Kotzu, so we don't have to worry about any uh, inbreeding. Arse error in value. Eco's Zootopia. There we go. Uh, can't remember. I think we're fine there. Gonna find out together. Good genes. <laughs> really good genes. Uh, Panya, no, I need more. Uh, oh, oh, I want more, uh, you know, gold tier, gold rank. Caught zoo again. Inbreeding is not a problem, right? Because they're both females. Our male is from a different place. That's 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 what matters here. Go ahead and grab you. Good stuff. I, I I'm glad I checked before and now after as well because we're getting good variety here. And these are some really good. Who whoever runs Kakat Zoo has got some uh, really good Springbok. And your Eco Zootopia. And I am I not? Come on. Oh, you know what? We're probably full up. We're not, but. I don't know why it's not letting me grab one more. Go ahead and send you three over to quarantine. I'm going to go ahead and unpause so that while that's happening, maybe it'll allow me to, to scoop up some of these others that uh, I would really like to scoop up. Oh, they must have already been picked up. I'm guessing that's what happened. They got picked up already and the just the UI didn't update and it didn't tell me... Um, it didn't like flag that they'd been taken. Male, male, yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay, well, that's all good. Uh, so we'll add them soon, and we'll we'll check again later as well if we can have some more females in here. We don't want to overdo it, because, again, we want to make sure that there's room enough for all of the animals. We might actually need to expand this even more. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. It's been a it's been a crazy uh, week and weekend, and the weekend to come is going to be wild as well. I've been recording so much 
uh, with E3 and uh, and now with the Steam uh, Next Fest. There's a lot of recording going on. There's a lot of fun videos on the channel, by the way, folks. If you're curious about other games that are coming up and stuff like that, you might want to check some of those videos out. But, uh, but yeah, I'm definitely losing my voice because of this. Um, so excuse me if I if I sound a little hoarse. Uh, but, uh, but we're not here to talk about horses. We're here to talk about Springbok and uh, and the other animals that will come in here. I want to make sure that we don't um, like. I'm I'm perfectly cool with making this space even larger, but there's a tipping point where it becomes unreasonable, right? Like. A guest up over there is not going to be able to see, you know, a wildebeest down over here, right? Like, and and if this goes even further, then like, like you're not going to see a wildebeest off over, over over here. I mean, okay, sure, you'll notice them, but you're not going to see them. You know what I mean? Um, I really wish they'd add. I mean, since they're adding vistas, it would be really nice if they add those little like binocular um, things. You know what I'm talking about? Like, what you can stand by them and then you can look through them and, and you can get a proper view of a thing that's far up binoculars. I'm, I'm just describing binoculars here. But you get them as like little, you know, you pop in like 25 cents or something and then you can, or, or like a dollar or something, and you get to look through them. Inflation, man, it's wild. But uh, th that would be pretty cool, actually. That would be a really cool uh, thing to add. I don't know if zoos typically do that, but, you know, if you're going to do a zoo that's more in the world of these massive expanses, you might take advantage of that. Just something to think about. But, uh, yeah, so I got to balance the, the size of this space with... Uh, we just, you know, reason, right? I gotta keep it within reason. I'm definitely gonna want to smooth this out a little bit. I'm not the biggest fan of how this all looks. Oh god, doing it when I'm not paused is a really bad idea. Jeez. Frames are not liking this. Quarantine's getting passed, though. And it looks like our animals are no longer having any issues with regards to... Like, the Bonobo issue is, is behind us, it looks like. On the topic of which, a little bit more research complete over here. I think quarantine is almost done. Go ahead and there we go. All of you are done. Scoop you up. Move you to our yet to be named Habitat 50. Wild to think about. Habitat 50. Really, eh? That's number 50. Crazy. Silly having negative effects up over. Oh no. No, don't do this to me. No, don't do this to me, game. No. <laughs> this is the problem with having something be uh, always online. Oh no. Well. I guess we'll have to hang tight and see if my internet comes back. If not, at least we have an episode with, uh, with the time. My internet's not even dead. Oh, no, folks. This is unfortunate. There might be an issue with the uh, Planet Zoo servers right now. Looks like my internet's still working just fine. Well. Hopefully, we're able to get the animal in today. Because it'll just be a momentary lapse in service. We're good. We are back. Okay, that's good. That's good. Now, why is this? Okay, first of all, my camera is not working. My there we go. Everything kind of broke there for a second. Why is this uh, so problematic? Um. Oh, right, right, right. Of course, of course. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and uh, fix this. I did not realize how high this actually was. I don't know if we'll be able to. We might have to like dig down and 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 push these things down a little bit. But uh, oh dear. Okay, let's see if we can't. Scoop up some of this stuff over here. Make a bit of a uh, nicer space for our equipment here. Come on now. Oh, I seriously can't. Come on. Really don't like how duplicating is uh, different for different uh, types of things. I don't know how else to phrase that right now. Like, oh, if you're a object versus if you're a building piece versus if you're a group it's like duplicating works differently grab you let's go ahead and grab these speakers as well they tend to help i was wondering where the uh yeah like it said two uh spots where, where guests were upset and i was like normally just the one that's like not really upsetting anybody but this this would upset folks for sure 96 percent Ooh, almost. Oh, so very close. That last 4% might actually make all the difference we needed to make. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, scoop you over this way. Maybe if we got another one over this way, that'll be just about enough. 88%. No, come on now. 100%. There we go. Beautiful. Wow. It must like just barely, just barely be stopping uh, before, before, you know, coming out on the ground over here. Wow. All right. That worked out perfectly. Lesson learned for the future, I guess. Let's go ahead and unpause now. Oh, man. That would have been really bad. Oh, not the end of the world. We could easily adjust it. Oh, by the way, I should mention as well, because it has been brought up in the comments. I, uh, 
You guys are still being picked up, right? Yeah. Uh, I am aware that I have not put in any education boards or donation bins or any of that stuff just quite yet. I want to do that. I want to do that sort of like at the end. That's like the finishing touch, in my opinion, because uh, if I if it comes to a point where I go, wow, I actually cannot fit it, fit all the animals in here or, you know, something like that, let's say. I just want to be ready for it. So all the education boards, all of the um, donation bins, all that kind of stuff, I think because we're so, you know, perfectly well off, uh, I think it can wait a little bit. Ideally, I wouldn't have to, ideally, but, but nothing's really ideal, is it? Go ahead and add these guys. Go ahead and scoop all you guys in here. Put you and you in here as well. Africa Center has certainly uh, grown in scale over here. Now, what's the deal with this escaped dangerous animal? Oh, okay, it's a full-on jaguar. How? How? I don't get it. <laughs> they can't actually escape. They like tend to like I intercept through the uh, the meshes over here. All these people leaving. <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. It's a friendly jaguar. Don't worry. Boxed up. Um, but yeah, so that's why I'm holding off on adding the uh, all those boards and stuff. I also want to figure out if I want to do any of the education boards that are not about animals, uh, those styles of education boards, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see soon enough. There we go, These guys have arrived, excellent. The grass is so tall. How do you feel about the place? Not enough short grass, speak the devil. I don't like the white birch tree. Oh, it's the broken tree sections. If it's not upsetting them too much, I think I'll keep it. And they look pretty pleased. The funny looking little bending of the body there, but hang on a second. I just realized I haven't checked. Yeah, they are in fact able to use the little uh, sand bridge or whatever you want to call it. And clearly these guys are as well because they've made it over here. Or they can just go through the water. This is so cool. I'm so pleased. I'm actually, I'm so very happy with this uh, enclosure. It's such a big enclosure. Everyone seems to be having a good time. I'm having a good time. I'm liking this. Y'all let me know what you think about the uh, the enclosure. Always curious to know people's opinions. That's so cool, man. That's so cool. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really quite happy. Um, go ahead and get some uh, short grass up over here, I think. See if that uh, works better for you. Yeah, that's better. That's a huge enclosure. But still, probably not our biggest, I don't think. Probably not our biggest. Now, again, right, like, these guys are, are not that large. But, like, the wildebeest, for example, is a beefier animal, right? So the wildebeest will definitely uh, feel like it's uh, it's taking up some more space. You even look around at, at the ostrich, right? When we have more ostriches running around, it'll feel a lot more filled up. But they really quite like this space as opposed to being up over there, right? Hopefully once the food comes with their... Uh, incl with their... Um, uh, food enrichment item up over there. Hopefully it'll draw them up over there. Plain zebra are fighting due to overcrowding. Oh, we've got a big... Okay, okay, hold on. There's a lot going on over here. Um, too many... Males, I assume. Come on. Release you to the wild. Off you go. Where's, where's my baby... Where's my baby, uh... Penguin. I want my baby penguin. There they are. Yes, he's so cute. <laughs> that is so goofy looking, I love them. They're so cute. It's is that its ear? I assume that's its ear next to its eye. That's so uh terrifying looking. It looks like a growth that became a like a hole in the face, which I mean, I guess that's what an ear is, but like, I don't know. But apart from that, you're adorable. <laughs> yes. Go. Oh. Waddle. Waddle. Oh my god, they make me such joy. They make me such joy. They make me so happy. They bring me such joy. I'm so happy that I, I can't even English right now. So cute. Oh, I see. It's mealtime. That's why. I was like, why are they all rushing over? Because it's mealtime. <laughs> Look at this one over here. Oh, it's so small. It's like struggling. It's like, wait for me. Don't finish eating without me. This guy, me, was just like watching this kid. Oh, they're so much fun. They are so much fun. Oh, the common warthogs seem to be having uh, disagreements. 
quite a few males have come of age. I'm assuming that's where the problem lies. We have a warthog named Rafiki. What are the chances? Please sail to the wild. Let's go. Only two can be released. That was weird. All right, weird. I had to do it two separate, two separate times. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. It was kind of strange. This is not like these guys were, you know, captive, uh, like rescues or anything. They were or, or paid for with cash. All right. Springbok over here. Enjoying the water. They are really quite gorgeous animals, aren't they? Oh, you can see the difference in there's that there's the sexual dimorphism I was uh, wondering about. The 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 horns are very different sizes. Got a very brief mention in the um, in the writing, but they're very different sizes. Here, oh, there you are. It's so fun. It looks like they're actually like grazing. You know, I, I really quite like that. Oh, are they? Are they actually just eating grass? I don't think so. They look like they're grazing though. Like, see the animation. Their mouth is moving. I don't think they're doing anything else. There it is. Oh, beautiful. You're totally eating. Their uh, their mouth movement while eating is it almost feels like a cow. Uh, I didn't get a proper look at it. I had the pleasure of feeding a uh, a, a, a calf once. Very very dis in my opinion at least distinct chewing animation animation movement words man <laughs> animation. I mean it's not technically the wrong word but you know. Whoa! Are you kidding me? That was awesome. Did you see that? That was. Yo, that was so cool! What? I, oh my god, that was so cool. Please do it again. I wanna- Oh, I really wanna see that again. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh my god, that was so cool. I did not think they would do that. Yo, I love this space. The colors, the lighting. This glorious animal over here, looking absolutely gorgeous. The flowing water, the sounds. I am really pleased with this um, enclosure. Come on. Yo, that is so cool. That is so cool. That is so cool. I that oh I have no words. I have no words. That is awesome. I did not expect that animation at all. How sick is that, man? Oh my god. <laughs> That's okay. That's a little less cool. <laughs> that was so cool though. Oh my god. That was uh, yo. That's neat. That's neat. I'm gonna I wanna watch that back on playback. That's really cool. Now I like this enclosure even more. I already. I mean, again, look. I love waterfalls. All right, you got me. Sue me. Right. I like waterfalls, but ah, that's so neat. Looks like we have some animals passing away. Oh, we have a few animals passing away. Actually, that's unfortunate. Ife, African painted dog, and Chata over here as well. Let's get the vets in here. And one of our West African lions, Busehi, Busehi, I'm guessing. A little vet in here as well. And it looks like we have a little bit of overcrowding going on here. Probably because of all these males who have come of age. All these guys, that's a lot of males. I have to release all of them. I mean, again, they, they're pack animals. Trade Center. Let's see if that does the trick. Then back to our uh, our Springbok and ostrich. That was um, that was really neat. I'm I'm really quite pleased with that. I'm really pleased with this enclosure as a whole. Just like feels good. The the only thing I wanted to do, and it keeps slipping my mind because I keep get distract keep getting distracted by the animals. Is uh is get um the waterfall bottom over here. Um just to add Yeah. Just to make it look like it's actually, you know, splashing over here. I think that works. Yeah, that works. And then up over here, like this this works well enough. I really like this piece quite a bit. Like 
I'm pretty sure this saves on, uh... I'm pretty sure this helps save frames using one of these as opposed to making all the separate VFX uh, pieces. Oh. Come on, camera, work with me here. They're so small. The they're, they're, they're a lot smaller than I thought they were going to be. I thought they were significantly larger animals. E even though I obviously read the, the size, right? Like, just... Visualizing the actual size of the animal is, uh, is a whole different thing, right? This is great. Oh yeah, by the way, I, I, I can't recall now if I pointed out this uh, this viewing spot. I really like this viewing spot as well. Look at that. I would spend so much time here. Like, having a meal and stuff. Like, I would spend so much time here. Buddy over here. Taking a seat. Taking a break from the heat. Chilling in the shade, falling asleep, looks like. Oh yeah, passed out. Guests are coming through. Yeah, decent, like, decent number, I would say. It was some more than I expected, I think. That's cool, man. That's cool. We have to start researching these animals as well. You know, well hopefully we finish the, uh, the Bonobo or the chimpanzee or something soon so we can uh, get back in here. Where's the Bonobo research actually? How far along is it? The western chimpanzee? Three more pips left. Bonobo had two, three, four more. You know what? I feel like we should get we got the king penguin as well. This is the problem with adding a lot of animals at the same time, right? Well, there's a lot of research to do. Hey, Frankie! Having a baby. Missed the animation, but didn't miss the baby. There it is. Hey, buddy. Oh, they're so cute. Moonwalking koala. <laughs> it's just like learning what the ground is. <laughs> you gotta wonder if the devs, like, if, like, you know, when a developer did the koala animation, uh, the, let's say the, the birth animation, right? And they called a bunch of other, like, colleagues over, like, hey, check it out. I wonder how much time they spend, like, freaking out over how cute these animations are, or have they become desensitized to the cuteness? Asking the important questions here. I don't think you can be desensitized to this level of cuteness, though. All right, back to, ah, man, I'm, I'm really, ah, god, I, I like this space a lot. It's just to see the animals interact with it, the way they've been interacting with it, it's, uh, is really fun. been really fun. This is good too. They're they're all coming up over here for their meals. Um, and as we get more of them, we have room for more, you know, feeders and stuff like that. They're coming up over here for their meals. The so guests up over here are able to see them here. They're coming down here for, uh, you know, for play. So there's a reason to be down over here. There's like movement going on. And plus they just like, I guess, exploring the space as well, right? Oh, it's going to be such a cool space once we get all like the wildebeest and stuff. I've always found wildebeest to be uh, fascinating. Just like in their like sheer like size much like my well no actually it's pretty different i would say but you know how i keep looking at the the silver back and i go oh my god look at this glorious beast that's kind of like how i feel about uh, wildebeest it's like oh my god look at this glorious wildebeest it's just they're they're magnificent is the only word i can think of right yo this is really coming together um i'm i'm very very pleased with this i zoom in around as well just feel very pleased with uh, with how the, these spaces are starting to look Guess it's all the way up over there. Yeah, and once we establish it like a vista or something, right? Again, I don't know if animal talks work any better now. I've asked and I haven't, uh, I haven't got an answer, so I'm assuming the answer is no. What's the problem over here? Not enough space. You know what? Maybe it's time to get rid of some of these uh, giraffes. Stop it. Stop it. I feel like the space is getting a little too uh, crowded. And I need to do something about that. Nutrition issues, not enough space. Yeah, let's let's uh, we've let this herd grow a little bit too much. So how about move a couple of you? Off the wild. 
There we go. That should be better, I think. Because again, they're not getting enough food, they don't have enough space. It's it's all problems stemming from overpopulation. I didn't notice that um, notification or anything if there was one, but uh, but it, it was definitely, there's too many of them. Not enough room, not enough like food being provided, not enough room for them to move around in. Oh, baby giraffes are so cute. They look so strange. They look, they look like they tip over. They look like they're wearing, like, <laughs> it's gonna sound weird, but like they look like they're wearing, um, like <laughs> boots, like leather, like really, really tall, like leather boots, <laughs> just because of how chunky the legs are. And then, and they just don't match the, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so cute though, this goofy little face. The derpy tongue, that's amazing. God. So good. Alright, back to our Springbok though. I feel like, I feel like the, the Springbok peaked early, you know? Well, once we get baby Springbok. Uh, okay, I take it back. I take back what I said. But like seeing that jumping animation right off the bat is just like, okay, well, it doesn't get it doesn't get better than that. That was pretty awesome, right off the bat too. I love the uh, our elevation changes in this space as well. I think it brings the space to life, and I think it brings it gives us a lot of good like visual angles and stuff. You know, a lot of moments. Look at that, preparing for the charge and then running down. Cleaning, you think? I want to quietly watch them sometimes, you know? What are you up to, buddy? What are you up to? Nothing. Oh, there we go. Had a feeling. Look at that speed. Short burst. But impressive nonetheless. Okay, what's going on here? More vet research complete. That is the Bonobo. Almost done. Almost done. Animals with low welfare. That's our snakes over here causing some... Not causing trouble, but having some trouble. Pygmy Pier. Pygmy Hippo is also having some trouble over here. Fighting for... Alpha status. Alfani. Why can't I do anything with you? You release her to the wild. There we go. Unfortunate, but we have a mother and father already. And over here at Maragawan Mansion, let's go ahead and... Wow. Okay. Looked all except for you two. And the Trade Center. Hopefully. Oh. Nope, nope, nope. Eastern brown snake. We have Diane and Permata. Get you two back in there. Okay. Then over here. Get you two back to the trade center. Trade center is almost full. Apparently, they're increasing the size of the trade centers, which is great. Fantastic. <laughs> it's uh, just going to give us some more time to, to work with. Ooh, about to have some offspring over here. About to have some baby baby ostriches. July of this year, yeah. You know what, folks? I don't often get the chance to do a cliffhanger for Planet Zoo. But I guess we have one here, huh? Folks, this is where we're going to call it a session. And uh, when we're back, we'll have a baby ostrich. We're going to be adding more animals. Again, if you have a preference as to which animal we see here next, let me know. Over to uh, Zoopedia really quickly. Uh, you know, one of these, obviously, not the giraffe or the zebra uh, or the uh, warthog. So if you have a preference for which of these animals you'd like to see here next, let me know down below in the comments. But... With the DLC right around the corner, we're going to be spending some time doing what we did last time, which is stepping away from Elite Zoo South and uh, working on that little mini-series, Zoo of Ours, where we'll add some of these DLC animals, take a look at all those guys. Uh, I hope you guys are, you know, looking forward to that. Again, we'll probably try and maintain a similar schedule 
as we did last time, as we did, uh, as we do with like regular Planet Zoo episodes, that'll give us a chance to properly explore some of those animals, uh, give them their, you know, uh, time in the spotlight before we come back to Elite Zoo South, uh, finish this enclosure off, get the animals, get the last couple animals in here, finish this enclosure off, get all the donation bins and all that kind of stuff done, and then maybe even take a look at adding some of those DLC animals in here, apart from the other Africa animals we already have to talk about as well. This mouth is open by a lot, a lot more now. It used to be not, it's uh, very different looking. <laughs> it does still kind of have that shape. It kind of, kind of also looks like a, like a, oh God, what's the word? Not, not a, not a, not a top hat. It's a kind of hat. I forget, I forget the kind of hat. It's a little too curvy maybe. But anyway, folks, that is it for this session. I hope you had a good time. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It does make a very big difference in how I approach content on the channel, what I do, what I don't do. Y'all know the drill by now. As always, of course, as well, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers. <laughs>